on to the Town of Norfolk Planning Board meeting Tuesday, September 27, 2022 at 7 p.m. This is a virtual meeting via Zoom uh, in accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the Mass General Law, Section 30A, or General Law, chap I guess it's Chapter 30A, Section 20, relating to the 2020 Novel Coronavirus Outbreak Emergency, this public meeting is physically closed to the public to avoid group congregation. Alternative public access to this meeting was provided via Zoom, which allows users to view the meeting and provide comments during allocated windows. To join, follow the web link or call the dial-in number listed on the town's website. This meeting will be recorded for future rebroadcast by Norfolk Community Television. Since we are uh, meeting via Zoom, all votes tonight will be roll call votes. Uh, so let's do a quick introduction. Uh, so we have planning board members, myself, Chad Peck, Eric Diamond, uh, Chris Montefort, and Gary Sullivan. We have our associate member, Melissa Mayo, and we have our town planner, Richard McCarthy, on the call. I don't see anyone else in the Zoom, uh, so we'll get started. Uh, the first items for discussion tonight are the the zoning bylaws section. Oh, you just took the screen away. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll put it back <laughs> up. My bad. No, that's fine. I got it on the other screen. Uh, so we were. Oh, I just got I just got kicked out of my one my drive. Let me move this over. Uh, so we got the zoning bylaws section D schedule of use regulations. Um, just a quick kind of recap, Chris and I went to the advisory board meeting, uh, last week, we attended it via zoom, uh, and that I, I thought that went very well. We went over all the, the bylaws that we are proposing for fall meeting, which is the B1 bylaw, the C4 bylaws, and then the zoning bylaws we had, um, as you probably all saw the email, uh, last week, it, it, we got to a point where we just weren't ready to to move forward with these for the fall meeting. There was just too much. It, it was not we weren't we weren't able to prevent it, present it in a simple, streamlined approach. Plus, there was we still don't have the mass general, the, the new e code. We don't have the e code approved by by the uh, attorney general. So there's just a lot of confusion going on with uh, how we want to um, present this, and we we need to make sure we get this right. Um, so I, I commend Bob and his team for putting together that use table, and I you know I, I'm fully committed to moving forward with this, just not for fall. It's just too much too soon, and so that's that's kind of why we're here. One of the reasons we're here tonight is to go through, go all right, how do we make this easily presentable and what's the best way to organize this so it's it's a package that um is easily digestible and uh, we can get the support of the town to move forward with it because we all know it, it the table makes sense it eliminates a lot of confusion and discrepancy uh, but we need to make sure that this is easily presentable to everybody else and if we're and if and if we're confused to some extent, I can only imagine how confused others would be, especially people that uh, show up at the town meeting that aren't as well informed as we are. So, did I miss anything, Chris or Rich? Uh, no, and I think uh, I did. I was at the ZBA, so I wasn't able to attend the advisory board, but I did watch watch the meeting afterwards to to get some of the questions that came up. Um, so be better prepared, uh, going forward, a couple of, couple, of, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, I'm going to share just what we left off. Um, so in terms of the, the end product, we want to break it into essentially two articles, the end result, which one would be substantive changes and then one would be, uh, insubstantial or non-substantive changes. And uh, so I had conversations with the uh, town council between the advisory board 
well, between your last planning board meeting on the 11th and, and then the advisory board on the 21st. So the, the prevailing thought is to try to make it simple is the use table. Instead of using the what I had presented to you before, the strike through for the old table, we will uh, we'll just show the old table without strike through and say that that table is going to be removed. And then the new table, which I'll just scroll down, at least just for point of reference, would be, hold on a second, let me get to it, would be this uh, new table, which you see in, on the page, which has across the board the yes, no's special permit, if that's the case. So it would be remove and replace. And then below it would be the changes, which are when we have, for example, eight different ways to say retail sales, we show that it goes from eight ways down to one. That's one example. And then restaurant, I think we have eight of those. And we go down to three. So that way people can follow hopefully a little bit easier that and then we would have a, a descriptive narrative you know like a description what happened so in terms of the sub districts that were in the use table got brought into the the new table all combined and then where there was duplications or repetitive languages we eliminated that to condense it down and so i'm just working with council i i shot off a couple of options how to structure the the article so once i hear back from town council then i'll go tackle the other ones to make sure i'm on the right path to then present to the board so you can take a look at it and say yeah this looks good uh we're ready to go forward and then with the goal of having the public hearing in january give or mm -hmm. take that time frame um so we're within that six month window of town meeting because you you can't go sooner than six months for zoning articles. Otherwise, you have to do hearings. So you'd be within it. And then as the warrant opens up in February, you can submit them in and you've already gone through the hearing process and you've, you know, the advisory board gets to take a peek to look at it. Others can take a peek at it. So it kind of go through the whole comment period ahead of time. So you have really the finished product. So there isn't... Uh, you're not going back and forth. So then you can really get into, you know, just going forward. And hopefully it's, it's, it's understandable format and people can follow along. So, and to that, to that point, um, it was the intention just to recap a couple of things from the advisory board that your meeting, your meeting with them last week was more informative. This is what we're doing. Yep. And we're going to hold the hearing on the 11th and then return back on October 12th with your vote. Um, <clears throat> we're just taking it one step further and cleaner, I would say. I would think they probably thought would be cleaner from what I heard, is that when they're submitted to the warrant, um, it's in its final form. You know, So we're not going through reiterations of drafts. Right, right. Yeah, so our goal, our objective here is to to have this uh, to to have this presentable for a public hearing in January, so we we really need to get um, all of our modifications, revisions, uh, planning board related done here over the next three months. Then um, you know, then have our public hearing in January, and then give it to, like Rich said, get, then we can pass it on to the other boards to review and. So forth. Now we'll probably include advisory and and some of the other boards in that process. You know, it, earlier towards the end of the year, once we're close, you know, just to give them some heads up. But yeah. So, um, and I, I think Rich, you talked about two articles: uh, substantive change, substantive changes, and non-substantive changes. Uh, are you? So there was, we had some discussion about possibly moving this, the one item out uh, regarding the zones that don't exist, that we have no, we have a, we have three, is it three zones that 
yeah. currently don't have any land assigned to them. We're not, they're not in use. Um, so we talked about those would go, we're going to reserve those for future use and pull them right. off the final table. So do you, would that be a third article or are you going to put that in as substantive changes? It would most likely be non-substantive because they don't exist. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. But it could go in substantive. But what it would do is I'm trying to. I almost wonder if it should be a, a, a third article on its own. I don't want to make 40 some odd articles, but that maybe that needs to be by itself just with a little clarification of why we're doing it. Yeah. As you're talking, I'm scrolling down. I want to. I'm just curious. Um, since we're not bringing this one to the fall, this is a special meeting for us. You know, Gary's traveling. Um, does it make sense for us to switch to the ones that we are putting on the fall warrant and saving this for a future meeting? Yeah. No, it does. I don't think we're going to spend a whole lot more time on this. Yeah. Okay. I don't I have. Think to, it was, I don't it was have more the, more of an overview of where we're at. Yeah, so I don't have any more discussion. Okay. It, 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 yeah. It anybody jump. else have any other comments on that those that use table before we move on? I've got something. The uh, number of columns in the existing table doesn't seem to match up with the printed version. And maybe maybe the first couple pages of that you label as current or watermark the, the whole page as existing by law or something. I think, Rich, you were going to just take that whole existing table out, right? And just say table removed. Was well, that he, was showing, he was showing the existing, the first 10 pages. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I've got to work on, uh, yes. So you're going to clean it up. Okay. I'll clean that up to Eric's okay. point. Yes. So I am wondering, guys, for the, um, just removing that table altogether, or you know, removing the strikeouts. Um, will we still have that available for anybody that wants to see it? Because I'm just thinking for if I'm just if I'm a resident going to the meeting and you're asking me, do I approve this table? I think my first question is going to be, well, what was it before? What am I approving? You know, what are the changes? So I think the strike through is actually for me helpful. I don't know that it would be helpful for everyone, but for people that want to see the before and after for the sake of transparency, that might be helpful or at least making it available or having it as an appendix or something. So we can definitely play around. So the, the thought was the table would be on the warrant. So including the article okay. so in, its, in its present form, it was just that it'd be remove this table below and not have strike through. So that the, on the top, which just describes the action It'd be just delete the table below, but we, you know, if you want to do, that was just one suggestion in council. It could be a little clunky doing strike through, but we can keep it. Not, yeah, I think we've always done strike through in the past, so I think that most residents are familiar with that. Um, yeah, I know I am as a board member familiar with the strike through. So, <clears throat> are you watermark across the whole thing? Table to be removed replaced well, that might not be a bad idea there I mean, and that's kind of and that's the the point of this conversation tonight is like well we need to tune up what it looks like when it's on the warrant so people kind of follow along and know what they're they're voting on and not um be unclear that makes sense so do you want us to just kind of like scroll through it in our own time and figure out how it would be best to be presented um yeah. Yep. To be clear. Okay. Yep. I think that'd be helpful. So right right now it's just two. I'm sorry. What was that, Gary? I was just gonna say I think this this is supplemental material an explainer. You know, either at the meeting or before the meeting. Yes. Yep. Yeah, so we'll we're gonna we need to mimic essentially what we did with a B1 says, so you know, it'll be a one page descriptor, just, you know, what, what this is all about in terms of the process, but try to make it more concise so people can follow along easily. Right. 
Hence why I'm asking you to officially withdraw these from the fall town meeting. Um, uh, we do need, you're right. So we need a vote to withdraw that, right? Yes, that was one thing I wanted to have minimally accomplished tonight. Okay, so I would like to entertain a motion to withdraw the, I lost my, where is it? Hold on. To withdraw the zoning bylaws section D2 schedule of use regulations from the fall 2022 special town meeting. So moved. I have a second. Second. All right, we'll do a roll call vote. Chris Montfort. Aye. Gary Sullivan. Aye. Eric Diamond. Aye. And uh, I vote aye. And Melissa, what's your opinion? Aye. Excellent. So that is removed, Rich. Thank you. Yep. So then we'll switch gears over to uh, the B1 zoning map change. And uh, again, I listened to the advisory board. So we did make the tweak. Um, in some ways, if I had put the row layers above, you wouldn't even know what the zoning is for the right of way. But because we, <laughs> We display it with the zoning on top and the roads below. You then, I, I know that people uh, drilled in on terms of that little bit of a kind of projection of the R3 zone, not the business B1 going to set a line. So what I uh, had Barry do from the, the DPW is we, we changed it. So now it follows the center line. So it'd just be extending that district um, to the center line to match up the other B zoning district. And then within that, uh, this description, this is just a written description describing that area that is represented within that green rectangle. Okay. So the, the, yeah, just a little history here that the advisory board was concerned. We only had the green going to the property line and they were like, well, what about, why is there this little parallelogram that's out in the road that's still residential? And so I talked to Rich and we're like, fine, let's just extend the B1 district out and add that little parallelogram. Um, and so we, just to, just to clean it up. That's it. So that's, that's all we're, and we previously voted and approved this as a board, but now we need to amend it. Yeah, so just that little uh, parallelogram, right? Yep. We had that little... Uh, I had to, good catch to get it now before it's <laughs> voted on, so... Yeah. Yeah, yep, yep. Questions? Oh, just out of curiosity, the advisory board did mention this. They were curious why it extends to the middle of the street. It might be good to just... Uh, provide some uh, information to that. Sure. Uh, go ahead, Rich. You, were... oh, you can uh, because it's kind of, I would kind of look at the evolution of zoning bylaws that as you know, the GIS mapping has evolved over time and now we have parcel layers. Before the zoning just, it didn't, it just carried over streets and you really couldn't differentiate where the road was versus the district. Um, in some cases, the zoning by which I would first go around was actually described along the property line. You really didn't have zoning on the road. Uh, you know, it was it was a right, right away. So um, there's, there's different philosophy on it. Just from presentation, the, the zoning district carries within the right of way. It's not really, it's a right of way. You're not doing a business or residential use. Uh, we're really, you know, just a way to 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 show it, you know, represent it. Um, so, like I said, it actually could have, if we had displayed the ro the right of way separately, and then the zone, you wouldn't even see it. So you would actually, they wouldn't even, you know, they wouldn't have seen it unless you pull the layers apart. But 
it's not. No, thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah. The other thing I think did come up or, well, if it didn't come up then, and I'll, you know, kind of touch on this point again. So this really, it's, it's a, it's a non-impact to the church because this buffer requirement that we're, we're trying to address with the fire station is a business district use or a buffering requirement, not a residential district use requirement. Um, so that's why this is being proposed um, this way as a potential solution. And a couple of things that was brought, you know, you know, the discussion of variance versus this option and so forth. So the town did apply for the variance. However, a few different things. Number one, the town purchased and acquired this property from the church with that provision already in the, in the existing zoning bylaw. So you didn't know back then exactly where this new fire station would be located on the property. So you kind of bought into what was there before in terms of the property boundary, which then coincides with the drainage swale that's in there, which is an easement over that property that the town acquired. So it's, it's kind of hard to say you meet the criteria for a hardship when it's really, you know, you essentially, you bought the, you, you bought the condition, you know, when right. the town town acquired the property. So, and that's where the, the concern was raised at the ZBA to see if there was another avenue um, to pursue, to address it. But fundamentally, uh, in terms of putting vegetation to potentially block, you know, line of sight from a public safety building is not probably good planning. Um, and then on top of that, from one respect, it's it would be screening a parking lot next door. So it's not as if it's, uh, you know, it's it's really, uh, you know, it's a parking lot in a residential district. So, um, but it doesn't harm the church. So if the church does whatever, then they're, you know, they're in the residential district. So this is, this is a business district requirement that we're trying to have a, a workaround for the town. And then a couple other points, there are special exceptions within the B1 zoning district for municipal properties. The library has one, the town hall has one. So it's not setting any precedent in that respect. So doing this change in terms of a public safety building, um, if you wanna say anything, it would be you may, you could be critical of the timing of it in that respect, but in terms of doing something for a municipal building, there already exists in the B1 zone. Okay. And that's it for this one, unless there's any questions. But, so. Any other questions? Okay. So I will entertain a motion to modify or amend, I guess you could say, the previously approved B1 zoning district boundary for the fire station as shown on the new zoning map or new proposed zoning map. And move. Second. Okay, we'll do a roll call vote. Chris? Aye. Uh, Gary? Sorry, yes. <laughs> okay, Eric? Yes. And the chair votes aye. And Melissa, what's your opinion? I would vote aye as well. Excellent, thank you. All right, so now we're on to articles two and three, which are for the C4 district. Yeah, and I, in terms of this, I think it makes sense to put them in one article. You know, there's two changes to the zoning district, but they could very easily fall into one article. So one, one art, two changes, one article, one vote. I could. I think that makes a lot of sense. You know, um, and you did, in terms of great 
you know, the two of you last week, it, it's not, there is no change to height that already exists within the bylaw. You're just allowing for a mixed use building to fall under the height requirement. And then you're um, adding uh, the use in terms of having mixed use. And the in terms of background, the reason why this is being, this use is being put in here, the way it's described, is because within the C4 district, really, that C4 district is River's Edge. There is no other area zone. So it's, on its face, it is special zoning for River's Edge. It, it's one right. of a kind. Um, so having said that, it talks about mixed, mixed use, but in terms of the C4 district, when I had Talk. I spoke to Bob earlier in the summer, and Mr. DePlaso came in. You know, Bob's opinion was that the way the bylaw that bylaw was structured, it, when it was drafted and then adopted, in terms of mixed use, I think the the mixed use was more like office, retail, uh, you know. Non-residential mixing of uses, not necessarily mixed use in what we more commonly see now, which is residential and commercial. So that's why you have that's why this is is written the way which mirrors what's in the B1 zone in terms of the use. I know from the advisory board meeting, um, one of the questions came up was uh, regarding the HOA. And the residents there do contribute to an HOA. Uh, so will the, the new residents of this building do the same if approved? I mean, I would imagine they would, I think, but it wouldn't be, you know, I, I would imagine it would be just incorporated. And so I think the plan is to do these as residential units. So if I, you know, if I pay a thousand dollars, whatever is within my rent, how you ever want to break it right. down would be part of that. These are going to be apartments, right? Yeah, these are going to be apartments. They're that was that was the intent as of right now was apartments. And how many apartments was it? Did I don't did he give a number? I don't remember. I don't think he landed on a number. <clears throat> okay, he hadn't hadn't got there, and so that you know this is really the opportunity to do this. If if this were to pass, then he's going to have to come back to the planning board to modify, you know, the permits that were in place before. To, to change it to allow this. And it's it's my understanding that he wouldn't probably qualify for a variance or a, or I no, mean, so he's the, not, yeah. it's not allowed, right? No, so he can't do it. Yeah, so that's another good point. So just that was that point was made. so in terms of our zoning bylaw, we specifically prohibit use variances. So that that's not an option. Some communities do allow for that, for uh, somebody to seek a use variance. We do not. So that that's not even an option. So it's either something that's defined as allowable, you know, either by right or special permit, or you can't do it. So because okay. I know that that was another thing the advisory board had asked is like, well, could he instead of changing the the bylaws, could he get a variance? And and I. I was on the impression he could not. So and you're correct. He can't. Yeah. So okay. Uh I would definitely recommend that these be combined. Um do you have do we need to vote on that tonight? Or I mean we've already voted to sponsor it. Yeah, we're supposed to sponsor. I don't I don't think we got the you know, uh, well, not for tonight. I think uh, maybe at the hearing on the eleventh, maybe just say, hey, we rec, you know, if you hopefully you'd recommend it again on the eleventh officially when you hold a public hearing, and then as part of that recommendate, you know, recommendation is the suggestion to bundle, you know, yeah, all the reasons one article. Can I just ask a clarification question? Mm -hmm. The is Article Three a condition for Article Two? Kind of is that's yeah, they kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, you can't. I was wondering. Yeah, yeah. you really. Yeah, you can't have. That's why they should be bundled. It doesn't make sense to approve three without approving two. Correct. That's my opinion. I mean. Yep. 
So yeah. I guess, Rich, I guess mm -hmm. I'd like to see the final language that we could approve at our meeting um, in October. What's that? In two weeks? Yeah. yeah. So may maybe even float out the, the proposed language ahead of time just so we could look at it. I, I mean, it, I think it's just combine the two, but um, but I think then we could officially approve it at our public hearing on the 11th. Yeah, approve it as is. Yeah. Okay. These really truly are. Eric's got a question. They're, they're married together, these two pieces. Because if you, I, I think we need another little piece of reference, or I'm having a hard time tying this back to existing zoning. Um, 310-11-4B, that all sounds like it's e code that's it is mysterious that we don't can't reference or see where that's going to fit in the new zoning. So maybe another something describes where it currently is, or is that that's all make believe to me till I see it? Yeah, so uh, what I'll do is for the hear for the hearing on the 11th, I'll take the existing language that prior to the vote of May and give you the references. Well, actually, I'll, I'll give you a copy of the bylaw. Just take that section, the C4, where this, where this comes from. Um, I'm the old alphanumeric coding. And then you can, and then uh, we do have the draft transcript or draft version of ECODE, what it would be in its final form. And I'll provide that too, just so you can kind of see where it fits, Eric, and the rest of the members. So, right, but I have to consult with. Three ten isn't going to be able to find it right now. Yeah, and I was going to ask if do we need to ask council um, how to properly write this so that it makes sense to those that are attending the hearing or even looking at it in the town warrant because well, I, I think what we're looking at November for the uh, DA, the attorney general to approve the e code, right? Yep. And so yeah, we're, we're so going. The, the deadline for the attorney general is November 3rd. So. And when's town meeting? November 15th. So November 15th. So by the time, but the town, warrant. Yeah, I know we're publishing it based on e code being approved. So right. what, we, what we discussed with what we discussed with town council was, you know, in the event e code wasn't approved through the attorney general, we would have, you know, need to make a motion on the floor to change the references to the old C4 for these two sections. Can you put something in there, Rich? Like just say, you know, kind of like they're doing for the new exit numbers, like old exit number, you know, it's like, hey, this is new exit number 10, but it's old exit number five. I mean, can you put something in, in like brackets that just says old, old pre-E code, Here's the number. Here's where it is. Yeah, we could do that. I, I like that idea. The only problem with the old exit sign is they really don't give you much advance warning with the old exit signs. If you notice that, that's a whole other issue. That's a whole other topic. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. But yeah, no, I could do that. I could put it in right. there in brackets. I think that that would be very helpful for coming into this fall meeting because just just what Eric said is, I feel like we're in limbo right now. We've 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 approved it and it's gone to Eco, but we're waiting on the AG to approve it. So that's why we more than we talk about this topic, the more the 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 sound decision was to hold off on the other stuff. Because oh yeah, that would have been super confusing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. So. Hard decision, but the right way to go. So, well, on this, like I said before, this gives us time then to get it right. Mm -hmm. It'll to get it right, make it make it simple, straight as simple as we can make it, and because we want it to pass. 
And I feel if we were to move forward with the use table, it would be a struggle. So um, let's, you know, let's take a step back and do it and do it right and bring it to spring meeting. So, all right. So any other, so the plan is put in some brackets with the old, old section numbers for the old code, combine article. And I would do the same thing for article one, Rich. Yeah, I'll do, yeah, I will. Yeah, I'll do the same thing there. Yep. I do the same thing for one. Okay. And combine articles two and three. And then if you could send us the the draft of that prior to the October 11th, that way we can streamline our our public hearing. Um, Absolutely. Okay. Anything else on on these articles? I don't have anything more in the articles. Okay. So the next item was. Sorry, did you say the old reference was C4? Well, the district is C4. That's K not the lettering. I think it was K. Okay. K4B. It's in the uh, agenda. Tonight's okay. agenda. It's K4B4D and then K7A. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so the next item was the other zoning bylaw changes. I know, uh, I believe it's Gary and Melissa are working on the sign bylaws and we're, the intent is also to get that ready for spring spring uh, meeting. So I wasn't sure if, if you want to give a quick update of where you're at with that as well. Sure. Uh, so Gary and I met with Rich, I believe it was last week or possibly the Friday before, but within the past two weeks, um, we went through a presentation that was mostly visuals um, that I don't have up right now, or I would share it with you guys, but I can send you the link. Um, it's just mostly what you would see that's kind of trendy and in other kind of village centers, which seems to be the goal that a lot of people in town would like to see in our center, um, B1 district. So we went through and looked at a whole bunch of different signs. And I talked to Jen Cody at um, Exhale Dance. She's also on the um, Small Business Association in Norfolk. I just went over all of the same imagery with her just to see if she, we were on the same page um, with what she would like to see as a business owner in town. She did invite uh, Gary and I to come to her um, small business association meeting, so we could go through that with a broader group, which is all the small business owners in Norfolk. Um, I will regroup with Gary. I think Gary in two months, not so her last meeting was yesterday. The next one will be two Mondays away, so we can go to that one together and go through that presentation and get some feedback from them. Um, but Jen was very happy um, that we're moving along and keeping the momentum going and there's a lot of detail that I would be happy to share with you guys on the next meeting if you want um, that we went through with Rich. Um, you know, anything from the lighting, the white. So we have white lights that are allowed on our business signs in Norfolk right now. Um, but we were chatting about that and there's, you know, it used to be just white because it was incandescent, but now that there's LED, you could have orange or you could have blue. So maybe we should kind of limit the, um, whites that you can have. Um, so there's a, a lot of little details that we were going through on stuff like that, that I would be happy to go through with you guys at the next meeting if you want, um, when I'm a little bit more prepared, but yes. So Gary and I, we can go to the um, Small Business Association meeting. They are loving that we're interested in coming to help them. And then we can bring back whatever comes back from that meeting to you guys as well. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to catch you off guard by any means. I, oh no, um, no, that's totally yeah. fine. Um, no. I just knew that you guys had a meeting last week and thought it'd be good just to, you know, we want to keep it on the radars, keep the, keep the discussion open and moving forward. So. Yes. So we have been doing that. Um, good. And we'd be happy to give all of you guys an update and show you the slides at the next meeting. If we have time on the agenda. Okay. I know uh, Chris and I made mention of this at the advisory board meeting last week, and we did get quite a bit of feedback from them. Like, Oh, make, make sure there's, like the size and the lumens and the colors and um, even some examples. And uh, one of the members even said, it's like, well, maybe you want to limit how many uh, electrified signs you have on one street. And, and I, I, 
I thought that was a little odd because that that you we could be discriminating that against somebody. It's like I don't think we can really do that. And I don't think that's appropriate, but yeah, I hadn't thought that I hadn't thought of that particular detail, but all of the other things are in the presentation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I think what I think where he was heading was we don't want this to turn into Times Square. You know, that's that's not the intent. I mean, the intent is to provide tasteful signage that makes it easy for the small business to promote their topic. You know, I'm sorry, promote their business and 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 also easier for us as the the public to find their business. You know, yeah. if you're, you know, if, if you're new to, if you're, Hey, I want to go check out so-and-so and I, I don't know where exactly they are, but here's the address. And then you see the sign all lit up. You're like, okay, that's it. You know? so, yeah. I will say. So originally I, what I heard on in our meeting was that it was the internally illuminated signs that were um, you know, that a lot of small business owners wanted. And um, I kind of just kept taking that a step further and a step further and a step further going through the bylaws because there were some, um, we have some bylaws now um, that don't allow for certain signage, even without lights that I think we probably should. Most towns would, and they're pretty tasteful. Mm -hmm. um, so it just kept kind of going from there, which is why I'm saying it's not really that short of a conversation, but, um, but we did kind of get into more of the, some internally illuminated signs and, Certainly we should have the sizes and maybe the size varies by um, zoning district. Um, you know, the white light should probably be defined a little bit better than likely when it was written in the bylaws. Um, and I think there's a lot of kind of quick wins with business signage that I think would be, most people in town would be on board with. And then we can kind of baby step into the illuminated signs, yep. internally illuminated anyway. Um, and we do have a lot of imagery that we can show you guys too, so that you can see exactly what we're talking about. And it won't be like, you know, by law in such and such town, F32 J will actually be. Right. Yeah. And then we, I know that this came to, this was proposed to us also because the town was looking for a changeable message. Like it, they were looking for their own sign more than just the changeable message sign that the portable that gets rolled out for, hey, we need snowplow drivers. <laughs> so I know the town would like to have something like, almost like a large TV monitor where they could put um, messages up there for, you know, hey, there's a water bend effect or hey, pay your tax, you know, your tax bills due or, you know, whatever it happens to be. Um, so we will also keep that in mind as well, what the town was looking for. Okay, thank you. Uh, anything else on that? Any other zoning changes? All right, I think the next item on the agenda was the interviews for the master plan. Just schedule something. So, so we Rich, did, you want to uh, give us an overview? I guess we got a couple of responses. So we did get a response uh, from <laughs> Metropolitan Area Planning Council, MAPC. And then we received the response from the beta group. So we have uh, two proposals. Um, so I, I know, you know, the next step would be to, to interview them, have them come in and make a presentation. And along that, presumably would want to do it in person. Um, so I would think um, you would want to do it in person. And that being the case, we probably would probably want 124 in terms of the size of the room. Mm -hmm. So that way, you know, the board can sit, you know, typically the board would sit and then they could make a presentation to the board. And then uh, in addition to that, it could be, you know, also televised so people can watch it. So, um, at least my thought, you probably want to do it in that room to give you the space to do that. So this so that, would be outside of our normal planning board meeting, correct? Yeah, outside your normal planning board meetings. So typically the, the nights that boards don't necessarily meet is a Monday and Thursdays that give a little bit of a 
and freedom for you in terms of. And we're planning on doing both of these on the same night, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So um, if you want to want to give them a little bit of time to prepare. So I, right. So maybe we have our we have our next pl plan board meeting on Tuesday the eleventh. Yep. So are you thinking that the yep. following week or the last week of October? I was thinking of probably more the the week of the seventeenth. Okay. So that would be if you know your schedule now. If the Monday the seventeenth or the twentieth, and I might ask you to see how your schedule is for both dates, and then get back to both and see how you know. So give them maybe a couple days. Yeah, a couple days. A couple dates. I mean, I'm sorry. A couple dates. Yes. Yeah. Well, Monday the 24th is uh, Monday Night Football Bears versus Patriots. So at at Gillette, so probably not a great night to have a meeting. Just throwing it out there. I've got plans that night too. I have a feeling a lot of people might have tickets to that. It's Monday Night Football. Well, no, I'm going the week before the 17th. I know, I know. I'm just saying. So okay. All right. I. I'm available on the 17th or you Thursday the 20th. Either one's fine for me. Both of those work for me. Eric, Eric? Gary. Yeah, I'm looking at the calendar. I feel like I'm missing something in here. Like, why, why am I flying somewhere but then available? This is weird. My calendar screwed up. Give me a couple minutes. Okay, Melissa. You're muted. Yeah. They both work for me. Okay. Oh, and by the way, just to let you know, we do know how to override so you have air conditioning uh, in the meeting room now. Yes. Just in time for winter and fall? Yeah, just in time for winter hey, and fall. Chris, to, do you I remember a couple of... Do you remember a couple of meetings ago when we were making fun of that fancy plaque that was between the two doors? Yeah. The plaque that clearly says HVAC override, use this switch. No. Uh, Rich pointed it out to me and I'm like, no, you just put this up. There's no way this is your whole time. I'm going to send this meeting recording to the facilities director. I told him the same thing to him. He's like, just so I wasn't the only one. But in any event, if we need to, we can change the air. So Gary, how, how's it going? Checking the calendar. Yeah, so I'm, I'm definitely available the 17th. I am not available the, oh, I am available the 20th. No, I'm not available the 20th, sorry. But I am available in 17th. All right. If we need to provide an alternative Thursday, the 27th works for me. We also haven't heard from Eric yet. Yeah. 17th is good. 24th, 20th is less desirable. Okay. So well, let's... what about the 27th? As Chris mentioned, what about the 27th for everybody that Thursday? That works. Well, I'm going to, and I'll send them an email tomorrow. Um, so I. Okay. Give them pretty good advance notice. So they should be able to kind of hopefully. Okay. Adjust their schedules. So. I know I'll, we make forum, but just uh, reach out to Weddleton too and make sure he's good on those days. Yep. I'll check with John tomorrow. Okay. And then do you want to start a little bit earlier or do you want to go with seven? It's up to you. I mean. Seven for me is the best uh, just because of soccer and other commitments. Yeah, that's right. I get that. Yeah, right. I would say seven. We'll just stick with seven. That's fine. Okay. All right. All right. I'll, I'll check with John tomorrow and then uh, with Beta and MAPC and let you know. Okay. And, and then what we can do is, um, you know, between now and then the meeting on the 11th, maybe think of some questions. Okay. So everybody do, got a homework assignment to review. 
the two uh, proposals and put together a list of questions. Yes, sir. Are you going to provide any sort of like a, a grading document for the RFP for us to complete as well? Yeah, I'll take what's in the RFP and put it into a, a matrix. Yeah, matrix. Yeah, that would be helpful, Rich. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and please, I think I don't want them regurgitating at the presentation. I don't want, I mean, betas is 64 pages long. I don't want them reading that to us. You know, I want them giving us the highlights that, you know. Yeah, so when we did the, you know, great point, when we did the interviews for the Medicom and Greenway, I, I instructed them, don't regurgitate what they've already seen in writing. You need to tell us something that we don't know that we can't, you know, we've already read. So yeah. for sure. Yep. Yeah, I haven't looked um, how many pages was MAPC 53. I mean, so they're both over 50 pages. So, yeah, no. Um, but yeah, if you could put together a little co comparison matrix, that'd be helpful. And then we can mm -hmm. generate our own questions. And um, I, do we want to limit it to roughly, you know, like 30 minutes? Of, I mean, I don't, 30 minutes for presentation, question, and answer. Each, I don't know. I mean, just throwing it out there. Yeah, you do want to put some limits on it. I don't. I don't. Yeah, think about what you want. I, I probably, yeah, maybe want less of a presentation, more of Q and A to be able to at least. I don't know. Let's think about it. But yeah, yeah. it does need to be some limit. I mean, yeah, yeah like maybe ten know. minute, maybe even ten minute presentation. And twenty minute Q and A, or something. But yeah, okay, something like that. I I just don't want to go on. I don't want it open ended going on forever. I mean, no, 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 right. So, but I also if there if it's a good discussion, I don't want to cut it off early too. But it doesn't need to go two hours each. I mean, so no, even though I can turn the air conditioning on, you don't want to go four hours. I understand. Well, you could turn the heat. Yeah, be, <laughs> turn the heat on and sweat us out. I was going to say we a lot like an hour and a half, and however that session goes in that hour and a half is fine. If we terminate early, that's fine. Right, we should not go past that hour and a half for both. You right? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. So Chris is saying is hour and a half for both. So you know, roughly forty five minutes each type thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's. So maybe that's 15 minutes, you know, 15 minutes of a presentation and 30 minutes of question and answer, or some some combination of that, but no more than 45 each. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. I like that. All right. Um I think that was all that was on our agenda. That was it. Any other new business? I don't have anything. Okay. Well, Gary, you stay safe. Storm's coming right Thanks. for you. I will. Yeah. I'm going to go buy a lot of water and, um, yeah, all the food from the Speedway down the street. <laughs> stay away from that gas station sushi. <laughs> Take care, y'all. Oh, wait, we, All right, to we gotta make a uh, motion to adjourn. <laughs> Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor, well, I guess we have to do roll call. So, uh, Chris? Aye. Gary? Aye. Eric? Aye. aye. The chair votes aye. And Melissa? Aye. <laughs> All right. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. All right. Have a good Thank one. Thank you. Bye.